Oh, to be this dumb. When you see um, entire media companies essentially exist to tear down Joe Biden, is there an equivalent to that on the left tearing down Trump? Uh, there, there really isn't. And, you know, what I would say, it, it, it's, a, it's really a diet of, of this type of information that a lot of these voters are getting. So, so wait, there's no anti-Trump network? Wow, even CNN admits nobody watches CNN. But look, even if you despise Trump, you got to admit this deception dares you to laugh in its face. There isn't an anti-Trump media company. Hell, there might be two dozen with CNN leading the hair on fire pack. The only reason every Trump book goes to number one is because it has two cable networks doing its PR, which explains why two recent massive surveys say media is overwhelmingly biased and cannot be trusted. If only this delusional thinking were relegated to the silly world of politics or Brian Stelter's head. But it's not. The same people who deny this reality deny a lot of far uglier facts. Rising murder rates, shootings, looting, property destruction, attacks on the elderly, killings by released felons, attacks on free speech, riots described as peaceful protests. And remember how the media pretended that defunding the police was a reasonable ask? For this to succeed, they had to bury reality, like Gallup's survey showing that over 80% of blacks and Hispanics want the same amount or more police. Funny how the white anchors never bring that stuff up. But in order for a left-wing view of the world to exist, you must pretend none of that other bad stuff exists, meaning the consequences of left-wing action and Democratic leader inaction. You can thank a media and the left working together to preserve their power. Meanwhile, Stelter also denies the reality of Joe Biden's decline. This is Joe Biden out there on a vigorous bike ride. Not wearing a helmet, but definitely wearing a mask, by the way. Fox's narrative and ra talk radio's narrative for months has been that Joe Biden is falling apart. You just heard Ben Shapiro say it, falling apart. And there he is riding a bike out for a bike ride. Cool. So if you ride a bike, you can be president. That's good news for these fellas. Yep, check them out. You know, I got my money on the pug. What can I say? He's got a sound fiscal policy. <laughs> Thank you, Dana, for the courtesy laugh. So I shall go to you first. <laughs> How okay. could anybody say there are no anti-Trump networks with a straight face? Is that literally, that is the literal definition of denial. I, I hope I wasn't disrupting your read of your, of your monologue because I was laughing through the entire thing. Um, when I saw the topic for today, I thought this is just like, basically they just make material for you for your Monday monologues um, right. over there. Um, <laughs> there true. are absolutely entire networks devoted to it. And there have been, there have been from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yes. um, well, really not till after he won, right? If you remember, mm -hmm. some of them were helpful to him when he was a candidate. Morning Joe. Um, and then they changed their tune. Right. The other thing is that if that's a vigorous bike ride, I would really like to see the candidates have to go on Kendall Tools, 45 minutes, intervals, and arms. <laughs> yes. And then we'll find out if they have vigorous bike rides. You know, I did a Tabata ride yesterday, the 15-minute one. It's perfect. It's just the right amount of time Those to do tough. Tabata. So, Dagan, <laughs> I, whenever anybody describes some, some action as vigorous, it's it's a dog whistle for being old. It's like it's like saying, "Oh, look how spry he is. He went he got he went right up those stairs." <laughs> look, he put two sentences together. Yes. Hear, hear. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo, yeah. Joe Biden. Um, I don't. I, you know, I I always learned if you can't say something nice about somebody or an entire network, don't say anything at all. So I'll just sit here and do an audition for CNN <laughs> with a sneer on my face and my mouth agape. Like that, because that's the equivalent <laughs> of, of what you get. They did armchair psychoanalysis of President Trump for how many years? Yep. Well, I would, it's not really armchair, it's more like sandbox while they're eating the, you know, what the cat left behind in the sand. I, I get nothing from this. It is the equivalent of a toddler eating toilet paper. Mm. Not you, but the other guy. <laughs> and potato. we would not advise that at all. Right, potato. You know, Lawrence, we've all, we've been, we all work in TV. Mm -hmm. I envisioned that 
there were people in the control room where the producers and the directors work who just burst out laughing when they hear somebody <laughs> say something like that. They go, don't you work at CNN? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the sad part about it is I, I actually feel like they believe this, which is really telling. <laughs> yes. um, but, but we laugh at this, but when you're looking at this from a logical standpoint, this is hurtful to their candidate, Joe Biden. Mm. Um, he's not prepared for debates. He's not prepared for real, real questions. I mean, it seems like every week we spend time because the president has done some big interview. Yes. And we have to pick it apart, as we should, because he's the president of the United States. He's running for re-election. But we never have that opportunity to do that for Joe Biden, because he doesn't do those type of interviews. And when he does do a layup interview, we always have to talk about his gaffes. Right. And his response to every tough question is, come on, man. And that that's telling, because there's going to come a point where he has to be on the debate stage. He'll get some prep, but he's not going to be ready for some of those questions, because he hasn't been interviewed. Those questions should come before the debate stage, and he hasn't been able to answer those. And I don't think he's going to be able to answer them on the debate stage right. either. Yeah. Donna, I saved the best for last. Uh, Shouldn't Joe, a very old white male, if he was truly not racist, <laughs> step aside and allow a woman of color to become president? By not stepping aside, isn't he reaffirming the subtle racism that we've seen him express over the past year with his commentary about blacks? Well, Great you question, start huh? off the segment. You started <laughs> off the segment talking about the media and bias, and I was going to tell you that if you look at the the last five years, there's been an increased pol polarization in the media, just like it is in our politics and our yeah. culture. So let's put that aside. The second thing, Lawrence, he's done 100 interviews, and while they're not all perfect, at least he's done 100, and he participated in at least uh, 12 debates during the Democratic primary. So maybe he doesn't answer the questions the way you like to hear the, the answer, but he is. Uh, capable of holding his own uh, with like uh, when he President, said last uh, week that black like, folks weren't uh, diverse. Like, Lawrence, if I if I comment on everything President Trump has said we over do. the last four years, uh, <laughs> we do. no, you don't. You don't. You you you, you whitewash and airbrush what Trump says no, I don't. every every Actually, day. I don't. But here's the point I want to make. Uh, we're going to get to see Joe Biden and and Donald Trump, two men in their 70s. And by the way. Um, I don't think 70 is old. I know <laughs> that some of you do. Uh, but I do believe that if he is, if he's up for the job and he can handle the job, just like President Reagan was able to handle the job and uh, President Trump, then let's debate the merits of their proposals and their, and their issues. That's See, that, that's, that's why, that, this is why Biden isn't ready, because every single time we have a conversation about Biden, his surrogates and people that support him go to President Trump. Uh, he's got to be able to defend what his ideology is, hey, but he hey, doesn't. Lawrence, Lawrence, have me on your show, and I can I can break it I can right, break we'll it down so it. well, so that when you talk about Joe Biden and his racism, I could tell you about Trump and his racism because it's white supremacy right. we're fighting, not oh. just white candidates. Okay. All right, I'm enough. ready for you. White supremacy. All right, we'll have a good it's time. everywhere.